Well, welcome again to the Lighthouse Faith Center today as we'll be uh, bringing, you, bringing you the Word of God. The Bible says, he who has ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So what I want you to do today is tune in your ear. I'm going to give you a principle of the kingdom of God. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God, a principle of how everything works. Let's turn in our Bibles first to Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. You know, Jesus taught a lot about a, a lot of things in the Bible, but he taught a lot of ways about how the kingdom of God works. And he used the principle of planting seeds and a harvest to get his point across. Because it's a picture most everybody can understand. Most people understand, I don't care where you live, in what part of the world, you know that people understand that if you put a, a seed in the ground, that you can grow things. I mean, this is how people live all over the world. They plant crops and they live off of it. And so he used that picture to uh, illustrate the kingdom of God. So here in Mark chapter 4, verse number 26, he says, The kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground. So he's going to tell us now how the kingdom of God works. The kingdom of God is as we cast seed or grain, uh, we cast it on the ground or plant it in the ground. It has to be planted. So he's using, a, he's using a parable to give us a picture of how things work. Now, I know in the Bible that the Bible says over in, in the book of Luke that the seed is the word of God. So we're not just talking about corn seed, tomato seeds. We're talking about planting the word of God. So the kingdom of God is as, as if a man should scatter seed on the ground or as the, the kingdom of God is as if a man should cast the word of God into, into the earth. Verse 27, and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. So once the seed is cast on the ground, the farmer or the planter, whoever's planting it, you know, they, when you plant something, and I know there's some of you will be planting things this springtime, you'll be planting stuff, but once you put the seed in the ground, you just have faith it's going to grow. Amen. I mean, you don't go worry about it, so what do you do? Just like it says here, you go to sleep. And wake up and go to sleep. And that's, this means there's time passing. You go to sleep, uh, um, sleep by night, rise by day. And the, the seed should sprout and grow. Himself doesn't know how. Now, I, you know, I, I'm sure there are biologists or botanists or whatever they are that understand the principle of it. But the average person doesn't really understand. And, and they probably understand it only to a point how a plant grows. But you just trust that it's going to grow. So in the same way, when you cast the Word of God, you just do it the same way. You don't know how it works. You know, if, if you get sickness in your body, whatever sickness tries to come at my body, I, I, say, I declare in the name of Jesus, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Now, how does that heal my body? I have no idea. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I, I know all I'm doing is I'm casting the seed and I'm believing, I use my faith to believe that it is doing something. It is going to grow. And so that's the same way. Verse 28, for the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. So verse 28 says, the earth into which the seed is planted is programmed or designed by God to grow. And actually the word here for where it says by itself, I looked up the word, and the word is automatic. It automatically grows. When you put a seed in the ground, and, and the, you know the ground has nutrients in it, the ground has water, it, it automatically grows. There's nothing that can stop it. Have you ever seen trees and, and stuff grow up out of rocks? I mean, I've seen it. I see a tree. There's a tree over going toward Iron Mountain. There's a rock the, the size of this wall here. And the tree is, came right up on through the middle of it and split the rock. Now, how strong is a rock? But the tree, there's more power in what that seed did than even that rock. It split the rock. 
So the, the seed, the, 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 the uh, earth is, is designed by God to cause the seed to grow because it says the earth yields a crop. The earth is the one that, that brings this crop forth by itself or automatically. It just automatically happens. Now think of that in the realm of the spirit. When you cast the word of God out there, it's automatically going to work. Your part is the same as the, the farmer's part. You just go to sleep by day or by night and wake up by day. And you don't worry about it. You don't fret about it. You just have your faith. It's working. It's working. It's doing what it said it will do. It will happen. It, it, is a, it is a law both in the natural and the spirit. It is programmed. Notice it says now, first the blade then the head and the full grain in the head. So in other words, there, th with most everything we do, there is time. Yeah. There is time. And what I want you to do, this, really the thing that I thought about most t this week, this is kind of interesting because this week I always pray and ask God, I said, God, what do you want me to preach on this week? I mean, here we are, we're Easter time, we're Good Friday time, we're, whatever it is. And I said, what do you want me to preach on? And God didn't answer me all week long. And yesterday, yesterday actually, I'm, st I'm still saying, God, what do you want me to preach on? And actually, I heard him say, well, what do you want to preach on? <laughs> so he left it up to me. But what I was thinking about, what was in my heart is something that, that was in my heart during the week. I was thinking of myself. I am, you know, I'm a blessed man. I am blessed. I, I don't know how to, I don't, I don't mean to be arrogant or anything about it, but I am blessed. I have, I have peace, like the Bible says, that passes all understanding. I mean, things work in my life. Why? But I was thinking, why are, they, why are they working? Why is everything so, just so good right now? Well, because for 30 plus years, I've been casting my, my seed out. I've been declaring by his stripes I'm healed. I've been declaring that he bore my sicknesses. I've been declaring that he became uh, poor, that I might be rich. I've been declaring this stuff for years and years and years and years. And really, I have, I have got a harvest right now. So my encouragement is to you, especially the, anybody, you know, you're, you haven't been in this a long time. Some of you younger people, just do that. You, it'll, it'll pay dividends unbelievable when you get older. You know, there's a principle about, about finances, about money. And, and it's, um, I can't remember what it's called. The principle of, Roger probably knows, double compound or something. That every so many years when you invest something, it doubles, it doubles, it doubles. So if you invest something, uh, you invest something now. You know, if you think about, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put $1,000 or $10,000 here, and then at the end of the year, you look at it, and it doesn't look all that big. But wait a minute, you leave it there for, for five years. You leave it there for 10 years. You leave it there for 20 years. You leave it there for 30 years. Now we're talking about tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars that are going to come from it. But you just got to be persistent at it. It's the same, it works the same way with your faith. You just keep your faith working. You just keep it going. You plant your seed in the kingdom of God. You just keep doing it. I don't care if it doesn't look like it's working. The, the earth or the soil of your heart is programmed automatically. It's going to produce. It can't help but produce. It will produce. Just like the seed in the ground, it will produce. This is a law of God. Do you remember over in Genesis, Genesis chapter 8, verse number 22, the Bible says, as long as the earth remains, there's going to be seed time and harvest. This is a principle of the Word of God. Seed time and harvest, day and night, hot and cold, summer or winter. These aren't going to change. You know, these aren't these are going to change. I guarantee you, I will guarantee you, unless heaven and earth pass away, that it will be springtime shortly. Hallelujah. I guarantee you, summer will come. Even to Ironwood. Amen. <laughs> but I'll also guarantee you, that winter will come again next year. 
<laughs> so in the same way, I will guarantee you, if you plant seeds in the realm of the Spirit, I guarantee you, you are going to get a harvest. If you start speaking health, prosperity, blessing in your life, by this time next year, you, you will be more blessed, more healthy, more prosperous. Amen. That's just how it works. That's just how it works. God made it that way. God made it. There's a law. Seed, time, and harvest. Or look at it this way. Seed, time, harvest. So you plant a seed today... You make a declaration, no more will I be oppressed or depressed. Amen. Well, you might feel oppressed or depressed for a week or a month, I don't even know if it's a year, but, a, but all of a sudden things are going to change. I'll take that. I am not oppressed. You know, there was years ago, I was oppressed. I was oppressed. I was oppressed because I, you know, back in the bad old days, I used to drink that crazy hooch. <laughs> And I, I used to get oppressed. I spent all my money. I had no money left. But now I don't do that because I learn better. And I don't, ha I don't have bad days no more. Amen. Amen. Isn't that awesome? Amen. Never ever. There's a point in your life where you can, you can say, I absolutely do not have bad days. Because I don't have bad days. I don't have bad hours. I, I give up. I'm, I'm down to minutes now. Hallelujah. I'm going to conquer that. I don't want to go down. I remember Catherine Kuhlman saying one time in one of her sermons that because you got the Holy Ghost in you, that you don't have to go down for one split second. Amen. You can ride high. You can soar like an eagle. Just, just ride upon the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Seed time and harvest. So just because you don't see something happen today, don't think it's not working. Remember, the Word of God is going to, when you put it in the soil of your heart, is going to work automatically. Praise you, don't know, you don't need to know how. Just believe God. Because that's what we call Bible faith. Now let's go over to John chapter 12. John chapter 12. Let's, let's see what Jesus said about it. Because we got to get some some uh, Easter Good Friday stuff in here. Hallelujah. So listen to what Jesus said. In John chapter 12, verse number 24. He said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone. But if it dies, it produces much grain. What he was talking about here, he wasn't talking about farming. He was talking about himself being, being uh, <clears throat> crucified, dying, being put into the grave, and then once he was in the grave, then he was going to resurrect and come back again. He, so he, he said, uh, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies. So he had to die. He had to die. I know we think of it as a, it's an awful thing that Jesus went to the cross and that he was beaten and that they killed him. But it had to happen. It had to happen. It's just like when you plant seeds. If, if the farmer don't plant uh, his corn in, you're not going to eat none of that sweet corn come this summer. Amen. That, that corn has to die. That, that, that seed has to go into the ground and die. And when it comes forth, it's going to bring forth your, your corn for the summer, your vegetables for the summer. Well, Jesus was saying the same thing. If I don't go into the ground, if I don't die, if I don't go into the grave, it's just going to be me alone. But if I die, I'm going to produce much grain. So, the, so he's talking about himself. When he dies, there will be much grain produced or there will be more like him that will arise. Amen. And guess what? Guess who that is? We are all little grains. Amen. Yeah, well, we are all little shoots that we shot up because Jesus went down and Jesus came up. You and I can re be resurrected with him. Let's go over to Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1. <clears throat> and verse number 18. Colossians 1.18, 
And it says, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he may have preeminence. The Bible says that Jesus was the firstborn. So if, you, if God writes something in there like that, there's going to be a secondborn, and a thirdborn, and a fourthborn, and whatever number you are. If you're born again, then you are in that number that, that he died so that we could live, and he, and he brings with him all those who have faith in his resurrection. If you have faith in the resurrection of Jesus, you too can be born again. You too can, be, can rise up. You too will be like Jesus. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Verse number 20. But now Christ is risen from the dead and has become the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. See, the same principle, we're talking the same principle now of the seed, time, and harvest. See, there was a seed. Jesus was planted in the, into the earth some 2,000 years ago when he died. It took until, for me, it was 1981 before my time came. When I was born again, I was born again in 1981, and uh, it took time. He was the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. Verse 21, for since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. So we know when God created man, uh, Adam and Eve in the garden, they were full of life. They had the life of God. The Bible says that when God created Adam, that he breathed in his nostril the breath of life. And Adam became a life-giving spirit. He became alive. He was he not only physically alive, he was spiritually alive. But then, as we know, Adam uh, fell to the temptation of, of uh, oh, disobeying God, and, and he died. Because God told him that the day that he eats of the fruit of the, of, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, he said, in that day, you're going to die. But he didn't die physically. He died how? Spiritually. So he was spiritually dead. He was spiritually dead. And so there was uh, the only way to get spiritually alive now is to have somebody from the spirit, which was Jesus, who is a spirit, because God is a spirit that came to be like you and I. He, he became a man just like we are, and so that he could die and that he could overrule whatever Adam did. It says, for as, as in Adam all die, even so in Christ all shall be made alive. Verse 23, but even each one, say I'm one. I'm one. Each one in his own time or order. Christ the first fruits. After those, afterward those who are Christ at his coming. There is a time, seed time. There is a time when the Spirit of God calls on you. The Spirit of God calls from spirit to spirit. He'll call upon you. Do you want to receive me as your Savior? There, there is the time, and if you acknowledge him, if you receive him, the Bible says to as many as receive him, to them he gives the right or the privilege, privilege to become sons of God. So each one, when he chooses to die to himself, shall rise anew. See, if you want to do it your way, then you're going to have to handle the rest of it your way. If you want to do it your way and say, I'll, 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 I don't need a Lord, I don't need a Savior, I'll take care of myself. Well, when it comes to Judgment Day, then you're going to stand on your merits, and your merits ain't going to make it. Amen? Amen. You ain't going to make it on your own. Hallelujah. The only way that we're going to make it is on what Jesus did. We, got, we have to be righteous. That's where we're going to be. We're, we have to be righteous. So each one, when he chooses to die to self, shall, shall rise anew with him. This is how the kingdom of God works. Seed, time, and harvest. I want to go back to, to John chapter 12 again. And remember, Jesus is, is teaching this principle of seed, time, and harvest. John 
John chapter 12, <clears throat> in verse 24, he, he said, Most assuredly I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains alone, but if it dies, it produces much grain. So he is talking about himself. But then he goes on, verse 25, he's talking to you and I. He who loves his life will lose it, and he who hates his life in this world will keep it for eternity. He who loves his life, if you, if you think that you, you can do it on your own, if you got the power in your own life for your own salvation, for, to, get, to, you know, to get yourself into eternity, the Bible says you're going to lose it. You're going to lose it. Verse 26, if anyone serves me, let him follow me where I am. There, there my servant will be also. If anyone serves me, him my father will honor. In other words, you and I have to die to ourself. We have to do just like Jesus did. Jesus gave up the spirit. He died to He chose to die for you and I. Remember when, when Pilate had him in, in his court and he's, he, he's, Pilate said, don't you know that I have the power to, uh, you know, to, to kill you or let you live? And Jesus said, no, you don't. You have no power over me except what's given to you from above. See, it's, I, we have to make a choice. You have to choose to plant your, yourself in the earth. You have to choose to die with Christ. You make that choice. And when, if, you choo if you choose to hate your life or, or, or don't trust in your own um, abilities, then the Bible says that you, you will enter into eternal life with Christ Jesus. To follow his example, we must die to ourself and follow him. Die to ourself and follow him. This is the way it works. Seed, you have to plant yourself into the, into the soil of the word of God and let God raise you up in newness of life and resurrection power. You know, we use this scripture over in Romans, Romans chapter, chapter 10. I use this scripture a lot when I, when I try to, uh, or when I get people to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior. But this tells us the method on how this seed time and harvest works. In Romans chapter 10, verse number 9, it says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart one believes to righteousness and with the mouth confession is made to salvation. So this, this gives us the method. Confession of what you believe. Of what you believe. Because just saying Jesus is my Lord and Savior doesn't doesn't really get you anything. You have to believe what it says here. You have to believe in your heart that Jesus actually died, went into the grave, paid the price for your sin, and rose again. And when you do that, when you believe that, then the Bible says, then if you confess with your mouth, or if you plant that seed, of salvation, then you will be saved. So you got to believe in your heart and say it with your mouth. Your, your heart, the Bible says over in Matthew chapter 4, uh, verse, verse number 20, I believe it is, that the, the, the soil or the earth is in your heart. If your seed is planted in good ground or into a heart that truly believes the word of God, then it's going to produce 30, 60, or 100 fold. So you have, to have the, you have to have your heart ready to receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior. And then the Bible says, if you will confess him with your mouth, then you will be saved. Verse 10 says, with the heart one believes to righteousness. So when you believe you're righteous, then <clears throat> you plant the seed. When you say it with your mouth, when you, when you confess, Jesus is my Lord. That's my seed. Jesus is my Lord. And that seed will begin to produce in your life. How many have found out when you receive Jesus in the Lord of your life, all of a sudden you just weren't so holy as you are right now? 
He's still working on me. <laughs> I mean, it's a process, right? I mean, it's a process. You know, I, my brother used to say this. I, I remember him saying this years ago. He said, next year you won't be doing, able to do the things you're doing this year. Amen. Because you're getting, the closer you get to God, the more of the world you want to get away from you. Hallelujah. You want to be stripped down. You want to be just like Jesus. You want to, we're, we're like onions, right? They say onion skin, layer after layer. God keeps put, tearing things off of us. Keeps, you know, we keep getting more and more like Jesus. And that's if you're following him. So the confession of Jesus is my Lord. See, that's a good thing to confess all the time. I mean, you confessed it once when Jesus became your Savior. But what about yesterday? Did you confess? Thank you, Lord. You're my Lord and Savior. Because every time you say it, you're strengthening your, your spirit man, you're strengthening yourself in the inner man. And you're getting stronger and stronger and stronger. And that works with every principle of the word of God. The more you confess divine healing, the healthier you're going to get. The more peace you confess, the more your peace you're going to have. I always confess I have the peace of God that passes all understanding. Hallelujah. I have, the, I have the fruit of the Spirit in me, which is love and joy and peace. I have peace like a river flowing through my life. And guess what? I have peace. I have peace. Now, I'm, I'm telling you this. This is a simple farmer principle. You plant seed. You plant it into the good soil. It will produce. But just keep doing it. The farmer doesn't just plant one year and then live for the next uh, 50, 80 years off of that one crop. He plants that seed every year. Some farmers do it twice a year. Get double crops. You keep doing this in your life. You keep declaring the word of God. You keep declaring the word of God. Whatever it is that you want to see change in your life, you find the promise in the, God, in the Bible and you just keep declaring it. I, I've, been, I've been saying this for years. I read it in the book of Proverbs years ago. Wisdom is my sister. Understanding is my next of kin. And I, I, I'm, you know, again, I'm not being arrogant, but I believe I'm very wise. I, I have an answer. I, I have an answer, I'm saying, for pretty much everything from the Word of God. Not everything. Not there yet, because He's still working on me. <laughs> But I got a lot of answers. I know a lot of stuff. Because, not because of me, because I, I use that scripture. Wisdom is my sister, understanding is my next of kin. Wisdom is my sister. So anytime I have a need of anything in life, I thank God. I say, God, thank you for wisdom in how do I correct this problem? Lord, how do I counsel this person? What do I say to help this one? What is it in my life that I need? Give me that wisdom that I need. Because I've been planting that seed all the time. I don't say every day, but I'm sure many times a week I'll be, I say that. Wisdom is my sister. Understanding is my next of kin. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. For sickness, I have health. And for poverty, wealth. Because Jesus set me free. Just say that with me this morning. For sickness, I have health. For sickness, I have health. For poverty, wealth. For poverty, wealth. Because Jesus set me free. Because Jesus set me free. That's a nice little thing to say all the time. Thank you, Lord. You might look in your checkbook and it might not look like you want it to look, but say, praise God for poverty, I have wealth. Thank you, Lord, I have an abundance of all things. It's your right and your privilege. If God says that he will give us a life more abundant, then he will do it. Why don't we get it? Because you're not keeping your seeds in the ground. You're not planting enough seeds in the ground. Plant a bigger crop. You want more prosperity? You want more health? Start planting some more health, prosperity seeds. Whatever it is, grow a bigger crop. You need, you need it for your family? You, you want to help other people? Well, start, start um, planting more seeds so you can go out and help other people. If you believe, you'll confess with your mouth 
Remember, the earth will produce whatever, whatever seed is planted into it. If you believe Jesus is the resurrected Christ, you will confess it. You will convey. If you don't believe it, you won't. You won't do it. You know, a lot of people will say, well, I hope so. Hope is not going to get you there. Faith is what we need. Amen? Amen. Now remember, this is, the, this is the way of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is as if a man shall plant <coughs> uh, grain into the earth or seed into the earth. And Luke 8, 11 says, the seed is the word of God. The soil or the earth, like I said, is your heart. And so how do you prepare your heart? You prepare your heart. Your, your heart is your inner man. When you plant the seed, where your production area is in your inner man. This is, this is my own little uh, interpretation or, or thing that I believe. I believe that when, when you make Jesus the Lord of your life, God, God puts Eden inside of you. So you are now, you have the same Eden that Adam and Eve have. You have the same ability to have everything that Adam and Eve have. But you got to plant seed. Remember, what did God tell Adam and Eve? I'm going to put you in the garden. Now you tend it, you keep it. So God, give, God has given you a, a new spirit. God has, has caused you to be born again. He says, now tend it and keep it. Guard your heart with all of diligence, for out of it flows the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 4. Out of it flows the issues of life. Guard your heart. What are you putting in your heart? What's the, what kind of soil do you have? I like the soil in, in Mark 4. I like it in verse 20, where the earth produces 30, 60. I like this one, the hundredfold. Amen. Amen. Remember, if you read, if you remember reading, if you're not, well, there's good homework for you. Do Mark, look at Mark chapter 4 about the sower and the seed. The first three types of soil didn't produce very much. But the fourth one, praise God. See, I'm in the fourth. I'm in the fourth. That, that, you're, in a, you're in the upper, upper 25%. See, because you know the truth, and the truth of what? Set you free. And once you know it, you know it, then you got to act upon it. You are required to act upon the knowledge that God has given you. And then it will produce for you. Jesus was planted in this earth 2,000 years ago. And when he rose from the dead, remember what the Bible says when Jesus rose? The graves are open. Hundreds of people, just, he just sucked them right up when he came up. He just, he just brought people up. And he brought people to heaven, and he made a way for you and I. Hallelujah. Amen. He is the resurrection and the life. Hallelujah. Amen. Remember, time, the, the seed is the word, the soil is your heart, and time <coughs> is your patience and persistence. Lord. Patience Amen. and persistence. Just keep doing it. Mm -hmm. Just don't give up. I mean, how many times have we heard this? And the Word of Faith message has been this forever. Don't give up. Christians don't lose. We do not lose. You never will lose. You, it's impossible for you to lose if you follow the principles of seed time and harvest. You, you can't lose. Just like that earth has no choice. Automatically, it'll bring whatever's putting into it. If you put the Word of God into good soil, automatically, you become a victor, you become a champion, you become a winter. You, a winner. You can't lose. Amen? Amen? Be persistent. Harvest is automatic. Oh, I like that. Harvest is automatic. Yes. Amen. Harvest is automatic. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. It cannot fail. If you do these things, it's impossible for you to fail. See, God's put all this stuff in the Bible for us. It's impossible because he always causes us to triumph. So that tells me it's impossible for me to lose. We are more than conquerors. So that tells me I cannot be conquered. But people say, yeah, pastor, but never mind, but get your butt out of it, right? Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Just believe what the word says. Where word people believe what the word says. 
You choose. Choose you this day. Deuteronomy 30, 19. I call heaven and earth as a record against you this day. I set before you life and death, blessings and cursing. Choose life. See, I choose to live. I choose to prosper. I choose to be healthy. I choose to be full of joy and full of peace. That's my choice. I chose to follow with God. God's laid two paths before us. Life and death, blessing and cursing. I choose the life side. I'm not going to lose. I'm not going to lose. I can't lose. <laughs> you know, I, I tell people, I, it's biblically impossible to get sick. I can't be sick. And they go, oh, yeah, but what if you get sick? I said, yeah, but what if I don't? I mean, that game, that game plays in my mind like everybody else's when I tell everybody. You know, I've been walking in divine health for years and years and years and years and years. You know, I've been walking in divine health. Well, how can you say that? Because the Bible says it. That's the only reason why. I'm not saying it because I'm anything. I'm saying it because the Bible says. So I'm telling you this, this day, it's biblically impossible to be sick. It's biblically impossible for you to lose. You can't lose. Harvest is automatic. It's going to happen. It's going to happen. Just be persistent. You will not fail. Let's go over to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes chapter 11. Every time I read this scripture, I think of Jenny Grime. Ecclesiastes 11, verse 1. Cast your bread upon the water, for you will find it after many days. Cast your bread upon the water. Jenny used to sing, it'll return on every wave. Cast your bread upon the water. Cast your seed into the soil. It's going to produce, and it's going to produce, and it's going to produce, and it's going to produce. Like I said, I've been doing this for 30 to 40 years, and I, and I will confess, and I will testify, life right now is 100 times easier than it was 30 years ago. I know, I know when you grow, you grow in wisdom, but I believe I grew, I grew in the wisdom of the Word of God. My wisdom is not in this world. My wisdom is in the Word of God. I am so glad I didn't quit. Don't quit. I don't care what you're thinking now, don't quit. I don't care how hard you feel is, don't quit. It's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. It's gonna get better. Just don't quit. I feel like I should stop there like a record. Don't quit. It's gonna get better. Don't quit. It's going to 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 get better. Amen. It's going to. I'm telling you. Because it has to. Yes. It's automatic. Just like the soil and the earth. It's automatic. So keep the faith. Jesus didn't fail. He was the firstborn that he battled against the enemy called death. Death couldn't hold him down. The grave couldn't hold him. Oh death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Jesus is life. He's the absolute life and life trumps death. Amen. Amen? Life trumps death. So, just like Jesus arose, you shall also arise in every area of your life. You plant, you water, you persist, and you're going to win every single time. All because of this principle that Jesus laid out, seed time and harvest. A grain of wheat goes into the ground, it dies, and it will produce. Jesus died, it died for us went into the grave, and as he said, three days later, he rose up. So we're coming into uh, this week now, this Friday, is what they call Good Friday. 
But there's probably a better, it's probably like Good Wednesday, Good Thursday, when Jesus really died. Remember that, think about this now. He went into the earth for three days and three nights. But when he came back up, he came back up in resurrection power. And that's the power that's available to you and I. So think about this this week. Think about the seed that you are planting. What, what seed is coming out of your mouth? Are you planting good seeds or do you need a crop failure? Are you planting good seeds? Keep planting and never give up. It, you're going it, it, to win. Amen. You're going to win. And Brother Copeland used to say years ago, he said, when, we, when, I, play, when I play this game, he said, we don't play nine innings. He said, it's my ball and my bat. We play till I win. Right. <laughs> Hallelujah. The game isn't over till we say it's over. Amen? Amen. And it ain't over till we win. That's right. Hallelujah. Because Jesus made a way. Yes. He died so that you and I could live. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. See, I got the life of God. It's living in me. It's living in me. I cannot be defeated. I cannot be defeated. And I will not quit. And I will not quit. Oh, I pray that you keep them words on your lips the rest of your life. So that you will you will live long and prosper. <laughs> Praise the Lord. God bless you. Thank you for joining me today as uh, we come to you from the lighthouse.